Hey everyone, just a quick reminder, this podcast is in no way affiliated with Disney Channel. All views stated in this podcast episode or any of the podcast episode are mine. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, it's Matthew from That's So Matthew and you're watching Disney Channel. Let's podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to That's So Matthew. I'm your host, Matthew, here with... Anna. And today, we're going to be talking about Livin' Maddie, which is a Disney Channel show that is pretty prevalent and one of the more recent Disney shows. So I think we should just get right into it. Just a key note, Anna is my sister. Yes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so Livin' Maddie is a American sitcom that aired on Disney Channel from July 19th, 2013 to March 24th, 2017. So that's over four years, almost four years, so um, pretty successful run for Disney show. Not a lot, not, Disney shows do not usually get that many episodes, just because they don't. Um, they're pretty, um, they have a, something called the 65 episode rule, which is pretty much only prevalent in the older shows, um, which stopped after a while. I think, like, Lizzie McGuire, Phil of the Future, and even Stevens. And the most recent Disney Channel show to end with si exactly 65 episodes is Ant Farm, and I think Bizarre Vark is going to end with, like, 64 episodes. So, we're going to talk about Liv and Maddie. So, we're going to start talking about some of the characters. So... Um, Dove Cameron as Liv and Maddie. No, well, yeah, Liv and Maddie. Because, um, they're twins. So, um, which one do you prefer? Liv, because I feel I can relate more to Liv. Dumb blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Take too long to be ready in the morning. And yeah. I think my favorite is probably Liv, too. Maddie is, um, kind of relatable, but very... Not. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, not definitely the complete opposite of me. So then we have um, Joey Rooney. What do you think of him? He's weird. I don't like him. Yeah, Joey's kind of weird, but that's like totally um, okay if you're weird. I have nothing wrong with you, that. That is so, such a good quality, I guess you could say. And he's just himself, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. So then we have Parker Rooney. What do you think of Parker. Um, when he was younger, he was really cute. Um, but he's like the brother that like that like they he has tunnels under the house, which is like barely even possible. Yeah, this show's pretty um definitely is not very um possible in a, some aspects of it. So um, what about Karen Rooney? Oh my gosh, she reminds me of my friend's mom, Who? Madeline. Oh, I see. I definitely see it. So, I'm pretty sure Madeline's um, mom listens to this podcast. So, um, you remind us of Karen Rooney, which isn't a bad thing, so. Um, but I mean, she's kind of a cool mom, so. Yeah, Karen's a cool mom, except for she's definitely got that weird, like, if my mom was the vice pres principal of the school, I'd be very... Very weirded out. Very embarrassed and weirded out. Uh, yeah. All right, so then we have Pete Rooney. What do you think of Pete? Um, note, he was only in seasons one through three, if anyone didn't notice that. He was not in the fourth season at all. Wow. So, what do you think of Pete? Um, definitely a weirder guy. Yeah, Pete is, like, a weird dad, but he's also the supportive dad, the coach dad who's like coaching the teams which there's nothing wrong with that like go right ahead do that and then what do you think about ruby who's only in the fourth season um she's kind of a flower child she's so like innocent <laughs> she's so like light-hearted like you know i don't really like her because i definitely think she's very phoned into the show like after um so i've talked about this i think in a few other episodes where after the fourth season of a show they have to change some of the aspects of the show to become so they could dub it as a new show so they wouldn't have to pay the actors more and Liv and Maddie Hannah Montana um and a few others are some of the ones that are really prevalent in this sense 
Um, so they actually changed the show to live in Maddie Callie style after Parker completely destroyed their home with tunnels, which really is impossible. I mean, to build tunnels under the house and especially to be held up by a yoga ball and then fall. But, um, so they changed, like, the show and, like, they introduced new characters. Ruby, I definitely think, was pretty phoned in. I think the whole, like, the Falcon. thing. The Falcon. The Falcon thing. Like, the whole season isn't bad, but it's definitely has a completely different vibe from the original show. The original show is very focused on Liv and Maddie. And in the fourth season, to me, it was just, like, more of a family show. And I think there were definitely some really weird aspects about the show. Because I think in, like, the finale, they introduced that the whole show was, like, a made-up show inside of a show. That's why they always have, like, those entries on, like, a reality show, which I thought was kind of weird. What are your opinions on it? Well, it was, like, definitely weirder. I don't, like, I liked the, like, the original because, like, everything was about Liv and Maddie, not, it was just, like, such a, like, like, how sisters get along and, like, how, like, their sisters by chance, friend by choice, like, always popped up, but, like, in the Callie style, it was more of, like, really big problems that they face, and I didn't really enjoy that. Yeah, so I definitely think that um, they could have ended it after season three if they truly, truly wanted to, like, go for it. And I think they did set it up pretty good, um, like, leading up to it for it to premiere. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. So now we're going to kind of talk about all the seasons and give our opinions. So the first thing that I want to say is that I, when I was younger, I did this um, theater camp show thing called Broadway Players. And um, it was the night of the show. We were doing The Little Mermaid and I was playing the pilot. And we actually, one kid was watching the premiere of Liv and Maddie on his phone. And like everyone was like crowded around him and like we were all super excited. And I th we thought it was like the coolest thing ever. So, that was, like, my first memory of the show. Like, I didn't, like, I saw commercials for it, but, like, we watched the show, like, as a group, and I thought that was really fun. Um, I still think I know that, I still talk to this kid, like, every once in a while. But we definitely watched it, and we really enjoyed the show. What was, like, your first memory of the show? Uh, I remember, like, I don't even remember when I first watched it, but, like, I watched it, and I really liked it, because I liked the theme song, and I liked the, like, the character base and stuff yeah so i was like i really started liking it and i became obsessed with it when i was younger okay yeah that's that's very um that's very accurate so season one um is probably not my favorite season i think my favorite season is probably season two so season one has 21 episodes which is like the basic go-to disney order for the first season it's usually like 20 episodes and the older shows it was like 30 but 21 episodes is a pretty good number to start off with because they can either add or subtract for the next season. I really think that my favorite episode was probably the one where they switch. Um, like, so that, um, Liv, um, does the, goes to the driver's test and, like, other way around. Um, and, like, they do the Space Werewolves thing, which I thought the Space Werewolf plot was pretty good. And this show has a very chronological order to it. They do air out of production order, like every other Disney show, I don't, um, sitcom at least. So, um, but it's a very chronological, like, a lot of the stories tie into each other, which is a good thing and a bad thing for when airing them. But they definitely could be aired in any order, and you'd probably be able to understand it. So, what, um, what is you, do you remember a specific episode from f season one that you really like? Oh, I think I like the pilot, because it's, like, when they go, like, they come together again. Yeah, I think the pilot is, um. It's, like, the most heartwarming one. It's pro it's a, it's a cliche story, but it also has a very good meaning. And then also, uh, a special guest star that I really want to bring into the show is, um, Howl Aruni is when she gets the role of the werewolf in Space Werewolves, and Laura Morano is in that for What the What Weekend, um, in 2014. So that was a really memorable, um, like, weekend for me, because, um, that was also the same weekend that Peyton List was in I Didn't Do It, my other favorite show, which we have an episode coming out in, I think, two to three weeks from this episode, so check it out, it's gonna be pretty lit. So, I think that's pretty much, like, season one is really really probably like the best you know storyline of the um season 
And also, I want to talk about how unfortunate it was that the people who, like, doubled as the show, like, Liv and Maddie, like, the Liv and the Maddie, mm -hmm. like, they didn't really get, like, they're, they were in every episode, but they were only dubbed as guest stars. So, like, really? they were pretty much robbed of, like, they could pretty much be leads. They did a lot of work. Anna, can you please silence your phone? No. Yes, please. No. <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about season two. So season two um, doesn't, um, it's probably my favorite season. I don't really know why, if I could t be totally honest with you. The first episode is the Cheddar Brought Fest, and that is like, uh, episode that was so overplayed. Oh my God. Like, I love that episode. I love that episode, but like every single time Liv and Maddie's on, that episode is on. And Liv and Maddie actually still plays on Disney Channel, I think at um one thirty in the morning. Um, one to three thirty in the morning. But if you have Disney Channel West, it is on about six thirty in the morning. Why can't they play like Hannah Montana or? Uh, yeah, so um, like um, at the beginning, like in September, they were still playing Austin Alley, which I thought was pretty cool, and I would watch that. But they do switch out every once in a while for an older show. Like they definitely need to do like Hannah Montana. Or, like I didn't do it. Lizzie or... McGuire. Any old show. Um, Living My has been on for a pretty long time, and I kind of like to see something else be played. So Disney, if you're listening. At that spot. <laughs> okay, so I think my favorite episode is either. The Cheddar Broadfest, which is premiere a Rooney, or this is a very iconic episode, and Anna will totally understand Kathy Can a Rooney. Oh my god. Because I had a huge crush on Piper Curta. He loved Piper Curta. Oh my god. He was like obsessed. Like I'm obsessed with like Harry Styles and stuff. No, like I was to oh the next level obsessed. It was and like ten out of eleven. Yeah. No, it was eleven <laughs> out of ten. <laughs> I'm like, what that means no sense. So definitely, um, one of my favorite episodes, I, it's still on Netflix, it's one of the only Disney Channel shows still on Netflix besides, like, Bunked, I think, so check it out before they take it off so that it's gonna go on that new Disney streaming service, I don't know when Isn't that, like, Disney Now or something? No, um, I think it, I don't even think Liv and Maddie's on Disney Now, to be honest with you, at the moment, um, but yeah, I- Yeah, I can see what- Shows are still on Netflix. I, uh, Kathy Canna Rooney is definitely one of my favorites, because Piper Curta, obviously. Um, do you have any one that really sticks out besides, like, the Cheddar Brought Fest? Not really. That one was, like, really good. I really liked that one. So, the season finale, um, was, um, the t they had 24 episodes in the season, so they added three episodes, which is a pretty decent amount for a show. And they, um, this is the one episode where, um, he goes away to live in, like, the cold place again. I don't know what it's oh. called. And um, she goes to like catch up with him and like it continues, which is something I don't think a Disney show has done in a while over over a period of time. They do not have any Disney shows on, on Netflix. Netflix. Not even Live and Maddie? I thought it was like Disney. Look up Live and Maddie. It doesn't come up when you do that. I think Live and Maddie and Bunked are the only ones still on. So, okay, um, uh, they have Liv and Maddie, Bunked, and High School Musical 3. And that's pretty much, and like, Zach. those are, like, the only shows still on. Is Radio Rebel still on? Um, yeah. Okay. So, my favorite, one of my favorite episodes is probably Cowbell Rooney. When Cowbell, um, where they put the cowbells around their neck, and if you get wrong, it's, like, the big hurrah. Mm -hmm. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, I don't really know um about anything else in the show that super catches my eye. And then we also have the season finale, which is like the most confusing season finale I've ever seen. The house is ripped like down. Like they knew mm -hmm. that they wanted to renew the show. But they didn't know where to take it. And I almost noticed that there might have been an extra produced episode that would have aired if they didn't get renewed. Because definitely they could end the show with the house being completely destroyed. Honestly. They could have just left the house. They could have. Um, but I just think Disney, they, they, they're smarter than that. Especially um, if they want to continue on. So then we have the fourth season, which is the weakest link of them all. I think we can both agree on that one. 
new characters, new sets, new theme, new theme, like new location. New theme I think song. Oh my God, I do so... have to say that I was very um, impressed that there was a show that took place in Wisconsin. We don't get a lot of those. I think the last show before this that took a scene or two in Wisconsin was Sunny with a Chance. She was from, I think, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So break it. But Sunny with a Chance will definitely be covered in another episode, so you guys should follow my podcast on Spotify and favorite it on Anchor, so you guys can check it out whenever that comes out, or whenever I can get someone to talk about it. So, this um, season starts with um, them realizing that them and Ruby are, like, sort of sisters, and I guess, in a way, they tried to make Ruby their third sister, which kind of was defeated the point of Liv and Maddie. It wasn't called Liv and Maddie and Ruby. It was Liv and, Liv and Maddie. Maddie. And I definitely think that they had their best intentions to continue the show, um, to reboot it in a way. But definitely, I think we can all agree it was a thumbs down from both of us as a fourth season. That was a not the best way. Not the best way to go, in my opinion. And then, one of my favorite episodes in the season that I will watch is the Linda and Heather episode. Oh my god. It's probably my favorite episode of the show. Um, so it's the one where um, Liv tries to get an audition for Liv or Linda and Heather, and she gets it, and like, apparently like, they fight all the time with their guests, and they scare them away. And Liv is doing so good, and then she starts a giant fight, and then they like start to make a spin-off with her. Parker like on the show like it was really weird after they both quit, but it's definitely probably one of my favorite one And then all of a sudden they introduced yet another storyline of the show For the California which I think the only reason they moved to California to begin with was to make a spin-off of sing it loud to make sing it louder sing it loud. And every time she I thought it was bad when she sang it um when it was sing it loud sing it louder took it to a whole nother um, special way, and then, um, and then all of a sudden, Gemma, the one from Wisconsin who directed the show, I don't even know what show. Voltage. Voltage is now, like, part of the, in California, directing Sing It Louder, completely different. And then, even in some of these episodes, Johnny Nimbus is in it, which makes no total sense at all. At all. I think also part of the reason they moved to California was because Liv was going, or, like, somebody was going to that college. College, yeah. And then Willow all of a sudden was, um, here, which they did technically go to the same college, so, like, I get it. But, like, and then in one episode, Artie's there, like, out of nowhere. Like, if you move and, like, all of a sudden Artie's there, like, I don't know, I definitely didn't enjoy that, and then all of a sudden, the Christmas episode is probably the most confusing of them all. I don't know if you remember that one. It's the one where, like, they're in a mall, and they really miss Wisconsin Christmas with the snow and stuff. Oh, yeah! So, like, yeah. they try to make it, and the guy, um, Todd Stetson is all, all of a sudden there, Johnny Nimbus is there, Diggy's there. Like, all of a sudden, all these people are showing up, and I'm, it's really confusing in a way. Um, that, like, all of a sudden these people from Wisconsin are all the way in California. Then, um, Todd Stetson, no, not, no, Todd Stetson isn't in this season after that, which is good. But then, I definitely think that when Artie comes, all of a sudden, it makes no sense at all. Like, all of a sudden, here's Artie, like, he's in Wisconsin, and all of a sudden is going to the high school with them. I'm sure they had a storyline, but, like, the storyline to me just didn't make sense. So then, one of the bigger episodes of the season, um, Sing It Live, Aruni, where this is, like, where she starts to realize that, um, the end is near for the show. There was, um, after this show, the, or after this episode, there were only two more episodes left in the show. And, um, this is the beginning of the storyline where Liv starts to lose her voice. I think you remember this it's like mm -hmm. i think disney they tried their best to wrap it up i think they did a pretty good job but they could have ended it after season three and done the same exact storyline in a different form because like obviously she wouldn't be doing seeing it louder you know and in a way or anything so what did you think of this live losing her voice storyline like yeah it's like it's like realistically it does happen to people <clears throat> in real life but 
if I just don't really like how the like they're rebooting like her show and like Ruby's on it too. Like how does that happen? Mm-hmm. And like they're just like I don't know. It's just like I it's reasonable. It's like realistic. But I'm just not, like, a huge fan of that story. The storyline, it does happen. It's happened to plenty of famous people where they start to lose their voice. So at the end of this show, it goes, this is something very, very confusing. So, um, no one really realized this, but she starts to lose her voice at the end of the episode. Which is 412. And then 413 is the one where she gets a chance to go on Broadway. Which I think anyone would know that Broadway is, like, the thing. If, like, you're famous and you can sing, going on Broadway is, like, obviously your dream. Um. And, <clears throat> like, <laughs> me, myself. So, maybe we will see myself pop up at some point on Broadway. But, um, then this is when, all of a sudden, all of these people are here. We've got Willow, Artie, Andy, Holden. Like, all of these people are back in California. Anna, does this make sense? No. Like, I get it. You're coming, like, to see your friend. But, like, all of you at once, and, like, realistically, um, I just think that they didn't really think it through. So, then I do have to say one thing that, um... Um, what do you call it? I'm having a brain fart here. So sorry. Um, so then, all of a sudden, like, they abandon the storyline. Not for, like, an episode, but for the production order to go to Big Break Aruni. So when he tries to get his stand-up comedy off the ground, which isn't a bad episode. I just think that they totally ignored the Liv storyline and aired it definitely out of order in a big way. And then the final episode, End Aruni, is always a bunner a bittersweet because karen's gonna go back to wisconsin Liv's going to new york and joey's going to college and parker and maddie are staying in los angeles so realistically the family's gonna be completely separated so she does the summer of rooney thing and there's no more Liv and maddie oh my god yeah it's it's a sad but the summer of rooney thing has a point and then i believe she has her surgery here um yeah, so they, I think she has her surgery, and then she can sing again, but it's, like, really worrisome, and, like, they left it on a pretty, pretty good note, high note, if you think about it, but there's, um, sad, like, if you're a child, if you're a six or seven year old, watching Liv and Maddie about how she lost her voice and had a surgery, I don't think anyone probably sang, any of the kids sang, for a pretty long time. So... Now, we're gonna probably see if I can find some, like, fun facts about Liv and Maddie. So, what is your final thoughts about, like, the whole series in general and, like, the f- the the run of the show? When I was really young, I loved Liv and Maddie. And you can agree with that because every day, can we watch Liv and Maddie? Can we watch Liv and Maddie? Yeah, it was like, ugh, And now, like, looking back at it, it's not the greatest show that disney's ever made but like i've been starting to watch like hannah montana like the older shows and they're way better and i feel like just like the way they like ended it with like family splitting up and like Liv and maddie aren't going to be together anymore it's the whole point of this show Liv and maddie not just maddie or just Liv. it's Liv and maddie so like it's, it's one of the Disney shows that features twins, so obviously. So now we're going to do some fun facts that people might not know about Liv and Maddie. So this is a pretty obviously one, a pretty obvious one, is Liv's full name is Olivia Rooney. Um, she um, is an actress, singer, and student. And some of her nicknames include Hollywood... And Queen of Hearts. Like, those are really random names. Queen of Hearts, I've never heard her be called that. That's by Willow. Which, Willow um, is in a new... The actress who played Willow is in the new show, On My Block. And, oh my gosh, I cannot... I just think she's Willow. Like, I just, like, look at her and say, oh my gosh, Willow. And the characters are pretty similar. Anna has not watched the show. Mm-mm. Um, I'm too busy watching Friends here. So, um... Apparently, Dove Cameron was bullied in middle and high school. Um, and then, um, she's more famous than probably all of them, so 
And you know, actually, jokes on them. I think this is a a fun fact you may not know, or any of the people listening may know. But Dove Cameron's like name when she was born wasn't Dove Cameron. What was like it? her dad would call her like Dove, and when he died or something, she would like she changed her name to the nickname she used to call him, and that her name was Dove. I did not know this. Where did you find this out? Somewhere on Instagram. So actually, um, Dove Cameron was supposed to marry um Ryan McCartan, who played Diggy in the show. So like some on set romance. And they broke up in the summer or in April twenty sixteen and now she is dating the one guy from Descendants, I think. Um the guy who played Captain Hook's son. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's some fun facts. There's some tea. And, um, let's see. Anything else you'd like to say? No, not really. Um, so some of Dove Cameron's notable stuff is Bobby and Billy. And that is totally for another episode. Bobby and Billy and Billy. Billy and Bobby. The Billy and Bobby show. Starring Bobby and Billy. Billy and Bobby show. So that is totally for another episode of Austin and Allie. So that is probably going to be coming up pretty soon. I have all the episodes pretty much planned out in order. But I love that episode of Austin and Allie. And I guess it does tie in because Dove Cameron was on as well as the guy who played Diggy. So definitely oh really, really good episode. What's sweet corn without a cobby? But what's a Billy without a Bobby? What's a Billy and Bobby? Bobby, Bobby and, and Billy, Billy, the Billy, Billy and Bobby, Bobby show. So this is going very odd. So I want to thank you guys so, so much for listening to this episode of That's So Matthew. I know I'm going to have a conclusion that plays after this that's pre-recorded, but I don't really want to phone it in. So any closing words, Anna? No. Anything like... What, uh, out of what is, is this one of your top five Disney Channel shows? No, and it's definitely not one of mine either. I probably would put like six or seven. Um, number one will always be I didn't do it. I think everyone um that I know knows that that is my favorite Disney show. Nothing pretty much is going to change that. None of the d current Disney shows. I do. Do you think that this show, if it was still airing new episodes, would survive on Disney Channel? No. I don't think it would either, because it definitely has a competition with Coop and Cammy, um, the family dynamic, and I think it's really similar to Sydney to the Max almost, in some forms, but I do think that if they're still airing reruns, they must think it's still making them some money, and it's also still on Netflix, which they took off Girl Meets World, so Disney only keeps their stuff on Netflix if they're making money from it, so they must be making money from um, Liv and Maddie still, but... The reruns would survive, but the show in general would not survive. So, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please check out any of my other episodes of the podcast. I have new episodes that come out pretty much every Friday. There's a few Fridays that will not have an episode, unfortunately. But we're still working on it, and I hope that you guys really enjoyed this episode. And, Anna, any closing thoughts? No, but I think you guys should definitely go watch Live and Maddie on Netflix, because then you will know if you haven't seen the show you'll know what we're talking about. And also, it might not be on there for much longer, so this is your chance. Get up and go. Please watch the show. It is so amazing. Um, <laughs> it's, like, not that amazing, but I definitely think that this is your chance to watch it while it's, if you have Netflix. Um, I do think you probably could be able to catch it on Disney now, so check it out. Make sure you guys um, watch Descendants with 3, which is coming out, which stars Dove Cameron. And um, thank you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys in another episode. Bye. Bye! That's a wrap on this episode of That's So Matthew. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Please check out some of my other episodes that can be found on Anchor or Spotify. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys tune in to some of my other episodes. New episodes should be released weekly, so check back often, and I'll see you soon. Bye!